We welcome you to worship at Mount Washington Baptist Church. Please take these next few moments to prepare your hearts to worship God as we listen to the prelude brought to us by Debbie Johnson.
one who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was in his and his to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Yeah, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings, you are my everything, and I will adore you. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder. At the mention of your name, Jesus, your name is power, breath of living water, such a marvelous mystery. Yeah, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was. I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Yeah, with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. And I will adore you. Dear Lord, we praise you and we thank you, God. We continue to praise you even through hard times. We pray that you will continue to remain faithful to us. Continue to give us a heart of worship, a heart after you, Lord. Even through it all, that we'll just continue to praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. Please take these next few moments to greet one another in Jesus' name. Feel free to use your phone to text someone and to say to them, Jesus is risen. We'll now enjoy a children's story brought to us by our brother Dale Adams. Would the children come down for the children's story? Thanks for joining me for my children's story today. When I told you back in January that I was going to be missing a few Sundays, boy, I had no idea. One thing you may or may not know about me is I am a huge Star Wars fan. And when I was a little kid, I collected a lot of Star Wars stuff. 
And now that I've gotten older and have kids, they've become big Star Wars fans too. And they've collected a lot of stuff. In fact, we have one whole bedroom in our house that we call the Star Wars bedroom with all of our old Star Wars memorabilia. I have this one picture that I love. It's over 1,500 little pictures all together of scenes from The Empire Strikes Back. And when you look real close, that's all you see are these little scenes. But as you step back and look at the big picture, you see Yoda, who's my favorite Star Wars character. And that gets us to our Bible story for today. You know, when Christ rose from the grave, not all of his disciples and followers really understood what had happened. In fact, two of his followers were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, which is about a seven-mile walk. And as they were walking and talking, a third man walked up on them and asked them what they were talking about. And they went on to describe the last week of Jesus' life. They were so focused on telling that story and what had happened that they didn't realize that they were talking to Jesus. Not until they sat down to have dinner with him did they realize that it was Jesus that they were having dinner with and that they had talked with the whole time. Unfortunately, we're kind of the same way. We get so focused on what we're doing and what we're reading, what we're watching on TV, what we're hearing in the news, that we don't see Jesus. And we need to focus on Jesus and then everything else will come into picture. So let's say a prayer. And thanks for uh, attending my children's story today. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love. Dear God, help us to see you in everything that we do throughout the day. No matter if it's the coronavirus, if it's spending time with our family, help us to see you in everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We thank you, Father, for all that you have made and all that you have done. Help us to look to you for all of the answers to all of our questions about life and the world in which we live. We ask, O oh God, for the forgiveness of our sins, and we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and that his blood washes them all away. We give you thanks and praise, Lord, for your many blessings in our life, for health, for home, for family, for friends, for fellowship, for the church family that we are blessed to be a part of. We ask, O oh Lord, for your healing and your help for those going through trying times right now. We pray for healing for Kathy. We pray for healing for Barb. We pray for healing for Linda. We pray for healing for Diane. We pray for healing for Fred and Mary Lou Newman. We pray for healing for John. We pray for healing for Marcia. We ask your grace and healing to be with Charlie. We pray for healing for Lynn. We pray for healing for Melba. And we ask your comfort and your grace to be with Sharon Reckles family at the passing of her father. We pray for your comfort and grace to be with the family of Martha Goble Burke as they mourn the passing of Martha's father. We pray for your grace, Lord, to be with all those who are caring for people in hospitals, medical staff and nurses. And we pray in particular for Chrissy Bartholomew's friends, Julie and Sarah. We ask for your grace, Lord, to be with those who serve in ministry and mission throughout the world. We pray this day for Dan and Sarah Chetty and their service to you in the Middle East. We thank you, Father, for the very words of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Luke chapter 24, verses 28 through 35. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while we, we talked with us on the road and opened the scripture, scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them, assembled together, and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what happened, what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. After the Battle of Waterloo in June of 1815, the news came to England at the south coast by ship sent by semaphore signals from high places. The message was Wellington defeated. And then a fog rolled in and concealed the signal flags. This news was gloom and doom for the people of England. But after the fog lifted, the people saw the rest of the message from the flags. Wellington defeated the enemy. The enemy they were speaking of was Napoleon. It just demonstrates to us how sometimes we don't have the entire message and then we react negatively to what we're hearing. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus only had part of the message, not the entire story. We read in Luke 24, verses 13 through 24, Now the same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Neither of these men had seen the risen Jesus until this very moment, but they did not recognize Jesus as he walked with them. They were kept from recognizing him. What do people need in order to see Jesus, in order to recognize Jesus? We need God's word. In verses 25 through 27, we read that Jesus said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. The 24th chapter of Luke doesn't tell us what scriptures that Jesus shared with these two gentlemen, but we can assume that from Moses, Jesus may have quoted from Genesis and also from Deuteronomy. 
In Genesis 3.15 we read, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Those were words that God spoke to the serpent after the temptation of Adam and Eve. In Deuteronomy 18, verse 17, we hear God speaking to Moses. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. What might Jesus have said from the prophets? Well, he may well have quoted from Isaiah chapter 53 these words. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. One of the ways that we recognize Jesus is by digging into the Word. In John chapter 1, verse 1, we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In verse 14 of John chapter 1, we read that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It's very important to read the Bible because the Bible is filled with words about Jesus. All throughout the Bible you read about the Lord. The flesh of Jesus came to dwell among us. What an amazing thought that is. But who is this Jesus? He is God. And what we read in Colossians chapter 1 about Jesus is that he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. So we recognize who Jesus is through the word. We also recognize Jesus by something that he did with these two disciples who were on the road to Emmaus. We read in verse 28, as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. They ask each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Since these two men would not have been present at the Last Supper, they were probably reminded of the feeding of the 5,000 from Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. 
we read in verse 19, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. And that's what he's doing here with these two gentlemen. As in Matthew 14, Jesus acts as the host. He gave thanks and he broke the bread to share with these two. Don't we associate Jesus with bread? In John chapter 6 and verse 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. During the Last Supper, Jesus said of the bread, Take and eat. This is my body. Sometimes we don't recognize people, just like the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Sometimes we don't recognize people even when someone very famous is only a few feet away from us. Washington, D.C. cab driver Sam Snow didn't have much of a chance to prepare for a conversation with his hero because it took him by surprise. While driving his taxi recently, Sam Snow mentioned to his passengers that even though he's a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, his all-time favorite pro football player was Denver Broncos legend John Elway. The passengers then asked Sam if he thought he could recognize Elway if he ever met him. Sam then turned around to realize that the famous quarterback who was in Washington, D.C. for the presidential inauguration, was in fact sitting in his own back seat. An amazing thought, isn't it? That you could not know that John Elway was in the back seat of your taxi. And that's what had been happening for these two gentlemen on the road to Emmaus, not recognizing Jesus until he broke the bread. According to verse 31, then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. The word for recognize in the Greek is epognozon, which means to know exactly. Now there was no longer any doubt in their minds that Jesus Christ was alive. But now he was gone from them. And so they ask each other, according to verse 32, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? The Greek word for burning is kaio, and it means to kindle. That's what the Bible does to people. It starts a fire in them. And so we hear the words of Jeremiah, who talked about how God's words were like a fire inside of him. His word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. So Jeremiah spoke the very words of God because he could not hold them in. And you know, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to share God's words with other people because it's a fire that God has started in our hearts. So these two men, according to verses 33 through 35, got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. I always find that so interesting because I know they're walking in the dark. They found the 11 disciples and those with them assembled together. And they heard a conversation going on in which people were confirming the fact that Jesus was alive. It is true, the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon. Then these two disciples told them what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. That's when their eyes were opened. That's when the fog was lifted. Like the people from England looking at flags, there is a fog that keeps people from seeing Jesus Christ. For these two men, it was the crucifixion. 
For people today, it may be the death of a loved one. It might be the loss of a job. It might be a serious illness, perhaps a divorce. There are times when people simply do not see Jesus Christ, even though he's right next to them. If you're having trouble seeing Jesus, look into his word. Stop everything you're doing and allow him to speak to you. Dwell on his promises. In Hebrews 13, verse 5, we read these words from God. Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. In Philippians chapter 4, and verse 13, we hear these words from God. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 says to fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We're to fix our eyes on Jesus and remember his many promises to us. Let him fill in what's missing in your life. Sally Lloyd-Jones writes these words. There are lots of stories in the Bible, but all the stories are telling one story. The story of how God loves his children and comes to rescue them. It takes the whole Bible to tell this story. And at the center of the story, there is Jesus Christ. Every story in the Bible whispers his name. He is like the missing piece in a puzzle, the piece that makes all the other pieces fit together. And suddenly you can see a beautiful picture. Well said, Sally. That's Jesus. Like the two men on the road to Emmaus, we need to see Jesus. Is your life missing a piece of the puzzle? Fix your eyes on Jesus. See Jesus. He puts the whole puzzle of life together. Thank you, Father, for this appearance of Jesus to the two disciples on the road of Emmaus. We ask you, Lord, to help us recognize Jesus, who is right beside us all the time. Thank you, Father, for his divine presence in our life. We thank you, Lord, that he walks beside us and opens to us the scriptures so that we may see him and see your purpose. Thank you, Father, for the resurrection and for your greatness and your glory in raising Jesus from the dead. We praise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you this day and forevermore. Amen.